Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at execute query methods in Microsoft Dynamics 365 forms. Um, okay, so in a previous article, we looked at how you can use all of existing functionality on forms to do filters such as um, filtering grid headers or even using a quick control up here to filter data on a grid in a form. Um, but sometimes you want something a little bit more specific, a little bit uh, a way of making the system work exactly how you would like it to work. Um, so in this example, what we're gonna, we have this vehicle service workbench. Here I've got a bunch of vehicles of different types with different vehicle IDs. It can have additional information. Maybe we have a status. Um, but in this case, my requirement is I want to be able to filter and just show vehicles of a given type. I definitely can do that using a quick control by, you know, typing a value into here and then selecting the type. Um, but that's kind of a two-step process that's not always as convenient as it could be and I kind of need to know what my option is before I type it in. Well instead it's actually pretty common on journals and other forms with different statuses to have a drop-down combo box where we can select um, our type of data. So here you can see I've got a form with vans, SUVs, trucks, cars. Well I can actually click this drop down select truck and have the system just show me all the records where the vehicle type is truck I can select SUV and see those or vans or cars um, and again filter the data this is pretty useful because again this shows me the various options this is done through an enum whereas if I were to type it in the filter control I would kind of have to know what the various options are or look in the grid to kind of see the various options so let's see how you build that um, behind the scenes in the form okay here's my form I've actually got this vehicle type control I'm gonna go ahead and delete it so we can build it again from scratch what you want to do is you want to find your group that either contains your quick control or create a new group above your grid where you can put this control. Then to add the combo box control, you can right click on that group and select new and then uh, look for combo box. So I found combo box right here. I'll go ahead and click on it and I'm going to name it something specific that I'm going to remember. I'm going to call it vehicle type, oops, type combo box. The next thing that I need to do is go to the properties window. If you don't have the properties window open already, you can right click and select properties. Once it pops up, there's a couple fields that we need to set. By default, this is a combo box, but it doesn't know what the various options are. So we need to go to the enum type and change the enum type to be our specific enum. In our case, it's an RSM vehicle type is the name of our enum. Now, once I do that, uh, this combo box, as we can see in this preview pane, will give us the various options of this enum that I had already created. This is the same enum that um, I have on the field, the column that I want to filter. So if you don't know which enum to use, go to the table, look at that field, and look at what enum is used there. Okay, now that I've selected that, I actually need the ability to refresh the grid whenever someone changes the selection of this combo box. The way I do that is I override the selection change method on this combo box. So I need to expand my combo box and then select this methods node and then right click on the methods and select override and look for selection change. I gotta scroll down a little bit and select selection change. This is gonna open a new tab for me with my code um, for this form. So here I can see the selection change has already been generated for me. 
right now this ret equals super is not going to do anything. It just runs the form the way it's designed to be run. It'll show me the value that I've selected. Well, what I need it to do is to call execute query on the data source associated with my grid control. I can check what data source that is by kind of scrolling down, selecting my grid control, and uh, looking for the data source property. I can see it's using the RSM vehicle da data source, and that's this one over here. Um, so I'm going to go back here and uh, add a piece of code. I want to add the code after my super, so basically after the new selection has taken place. I'm going to type in the name of my um, data source, so RSM vehicle, and then I need to always add underscore DS. This is just, it's a little hard to explain, but um, the system will always generate an object behind the scenes with the name of the data source, underscore DS, and that's how I access my data source. If I just type RSM vehicle, this actually refers to just the currently selected record, and I'm not gonna be able to call the execute query method. So I need to type in my name of my data source, then underscore DS, then I can hit dot, and I'll get some IntelliSense. I can type in execute query, open, close parentheses, semicolon. Now this code, anytime I change the combo box um, selection, it's going to refresh the data that's in my grid. Well, right now that's not going to do anything um, because we haven't told it to select any different data than the same data that was selected when the form first opened. So we need to actually override this execute query method on this data source to tell it to pay attention to the value that we selected on our combo box. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, you can see I've kind of already got this here. I'm going to delete it just so I can show you again. We need to go over to our data source. Again, RSM vehicle is the one we're working with. Um, select the methods node, then right click on it, select override, and then look for execute query. It's right here, so I'll select that. S again, the system's going to go ahead and, and generate this code for me. I've got a few other methods in here that we can ignore, but this is the code that I'm interested in. The system has generated it for me and basically given me um, a placeholder for me to add additional code. This super call basically tells the system to go, go out and retrieve the data and refresh the form. I need to actually add a little bit of code before this super call to cause it to um, change what data we're going to select. So the first thing we need to do um, is create a query build data source variable. So that's the type and then I'm going to go ahead and name um, my variable called uh, query build data source just with an underscore letter. Now that I've done that, I can actually take the next step. I'm going to say query build data source equals this dot query. What this dot query does is it gets the underlying query um, that our form is already running. So right now we have a data source for our RSM vehicle. It's essentially generating some select statement that says select all columns or uh, from RSM vehicle. So that's what this.query is doing. But we want to get just the portion of this query that's referring to the RSM vehicle table. Maybe we'd have multiple data sources on this form that are joined together. In this case, we need to select just our particular data source and table to be able to modify it. So I'm going to say this.query dot data source table. And here there's several different ways um, that you can get a data source. You can get it through a name or a number. I recommend using the data source table. So in here, I need to give it a table ID. So I can use this global function called table num and then pass it the name of our um, table, RSM vehicle. 
this is nice because then if the name of this table changes, we'll actually get a compile error. Whereas using some of the other methods, um, you may not get a compile error. So what we've done is we've selected the portion of our query um, that has to do with our table. The next thing we need to do is say query build data source dot clear ranges. Um, what this does is it gets rid of any filter that we have on this data source from before. So if we're constantly changing our combo box, uh, we want to clear out our previous filter before we add a new one back. This is similarly to like um, getting rid of the where clause in a select statement. Okay, then the last thing we need to do is actually add back the filter we're interested in. So we'll say query build data source dot add range. This is the method to add a filter. And we need to tell it kind of two things. We need to tell it first what field we want to filter on. So I'm going to use the other global function field num and then tell it RSM vehicle is the name of the table we're interested in and then the name of the field on that table we want to filter on is the um, vehicle type. Let's see, vehicle type, close parentheses, and then close the add range. And then we could assign this to another variable momentarily, but it's just usually a little easier to do this all in one step. So now that we've got a range, we need to tell the range what value to use when filtering. So we can say dot, value and then this is going to take a value that it needs to filter on. We could hard code something in here like car um, but that wouldn't be very dynamic or very good to do. So instead what we want to do is we want to use our combo boxes value um, to change the filter on this. So the first thing we actually need to do first is go back to our combo box that we've created and we need to make sure it's accessible to us through code. So if I scroll to the top and there's this auto declaration property, I can select that to yes and hit save. And what that does is it means that the, this name um, will now show up in IntelliSense. We can um, use this object and access its properties within the behind the scenes X++ code. So I'm gonna come back to our code. I'm gonna delete our hard coded value and instead paste in the name of our combo box and then hit dot and then um, in the case of a combo box we need to use uh, this method selection so selection is actually going to get us um, which selection we've specified um, on other uh, string fields you might use value or text in the case of a combo box we really want to use selection um, in this case, it's not going to be happy because selection returns an integer um, instead of a string and our value methods returning a string. So we can actually just use this other global function called query value that will turn our integer into its corresponding string. Um, and that's the best way to do this for a combo box. And that's it. So we've overridden our execute query. This is very common, just these few lines of code um, to add a filter. And this changes the underlying query so that when the super is called, it will um, cause a different set of data to be retrieved from the table. Um, so again, we can come back here and kind of see it working. I can pick a truck and it'll call execute query um, and filter by the truck value or SUV or van. Um, the execute query can be used just by itself or we can override it to filter the data um, right from the get-go. In this case, we decided to hook it up to a drop-down combo box, which is really nice. Okay, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.